In this video, we present an overview on supplementary cementitious materials, or SEMs, that are used as partial substitute for clinker in Portland cement, mainly to reduce its environmental footprint, but also to achieve certain properties of interest as resistance to alkali silica reaction. Cement is the binder in concrete, the most used material after water. It is produced in very large amounts, which amplifies its environmental impact, causing it to account for about 8% of anthropogenic CO2 emissions. A good candidate material to be used as an SEM ought to at least satisfy the following expectations. Have a lower environmental footprint than the original cement, be available in very large amounts and at an affordable price, and deliver good enough engineering properties to concrete in terms of flow, strength, and durability. Historically, the most used SEMs are fly ash and slag that are side products respectively from coal-burning power plants and blast furnaces from the steel industry. Unfortunately, and as shown here, the availability of those SEMs is limited with respect to the amount of cement produced. In addition, as we transition to cleaner energy sources and new, greener methods to produce steel are implemented, the availability of these materials is expected to decrease. Therefore, additional solutions are needed. In this context, the present video aims at providing an overview on the nature and reactivity of SEMs. As for other mineral binders, SEMs must, alone or with other compounds, react with water to produce hydrated phases occupying a larger volume than the original solids. This fills up the porosity, providing strength and durability to the hardened materials. Previous videos have illustrated this for gypsum, porcelanic mortars, natural cements, and Portland cement. The chemical composition of SEMs is conveniently represented in a ternary diagram in terms of lime, alumina, and silica. Thereby, the proportion of an oxide is found from a line parallel to the side opposite the angle of the compound considered. For example, for Portland cement being here, the silica content is read from this line parallel to the triangle side linking calcium oxide and aluminum oxide. This gives about 26%, which comes from the ratio of the distance of this line to the triangle base over the length of the triangle side. For calcium oxide, a similar construction is done with a line parallel to the triangle side linking silicon dioxide and aluminum oxide. This indicates a content of 64% in calcium oxide, while as for alumina, it is 10%. All three compositions add up to 100% as expected. Calcium silicate hydrate, or CSH, the main hydration phase of cement, also appears here. It has a lower alumina content than anhydrous Portland cement and a slightly higher silica content. Calcium hydroxide, the other main compound produced by cement hydration, lies on the calcium oxide angle of the diagram. Let us now consider hydraulic binders. These are mineral binders which, as cement, react alone with water and harden owing to the precipitation of hydrates. Latent hydraulic binders do pretty much the same, but owing to a lower reactivity, they require some form of activation, either mechanical through grinding, thermal through heating, or chemical in particular by adding strong bases that attack glass phases contained in SEMs. As shown in our diagram, slag has a similar composition to cement with a relatively high calcium content. This contributes to it reacting extensively provided it is well enough activated. Conversely, 
A poor activation, for example due to low temperatures, penalizes slag's reactivity from a kinetic point of view with serious practical consequences. Pozzolanic SEMs differ from hydraulic or latent hydraulic binders in that they require the presence of calcium hydroxide to precipitate binding hydrates, in particular CSH or CASH, as well as carboaluminates to various extents. CSH and CASH can be produced by a pozzolanic reaction between calcium hydroxide and amorphous or poorly crystallized aluminosilicates, respectively located on the calcium oxide angle of the diagram and the side linking silicon dioxide to aluminum oxide. A pure form of silica used in modern concrete is silica fume, which is also characterized by submicron particle sizes. This allows it to pack between cement grains, densifying the microstructure, extending durability, and increasing strength. Moreover, the amorphous or glassy nature of silica fume and its high specific surface, resulting from its fine particle size, make it more reactive. However, the pozzolanic reaction also concerns materials containing some aluminum as both natural and artificial pozzolans, but also fly ash, currently the most important SCM for blended cements after limestone. Useful additional features of fly ash are its rounded particle size, which is beneficial for rheology, and its high alumina content, which limits negative effects of the alkali silica reaction, ASR, often also referred to as alkali aggregate reaction, or AAR. In all these cases, Pozzolans only precipitate binding phases if calcium hydroxide is present, in addition to water. A more detailed description of their reactivity is provided in our video on Pozzolanic SCMs, while a historical perspective is offered in Roman Mortars and the Secret of the Pozzolanic Reaction. As we are seeing, a key issue for SCMs is their reactivity, and one way of expressing this is through their balance between hydraulic and pozzolanic characters. The more hydraulic a binder is, the more it can react with water alone, while as the more pozzolanic an SCM is, the more it needs calcium hydroxide as a co-reactant. This classification, however, mainly focuses on the silicate reactivity and the formation of CSH or cash. Similarly to ordinary Portland cement, but sometimes in larger proportions, SCM hydration leads to the formation of calcium aluminate hydrates. In those cases, however, the overall reaction involves some calcium hydroxide, which can therefore also qualify this reaction as pozzolanic from that point of view. Thereby, an example of increasing importance is the reaction of limestone, with aluminate phases to produce mono or hemi-carboaluminates, as explained in our video on limestone as SEM. This reaction is particularly well exploited by including calcinclays along with limestone, as in LC3, the so-called limestone calcinclay cement. This is because additional alumina from those calcinclays is available to sustain the formation of carboaluminates, while silica, also provided by the clays, can form cash or CSH. It should be noted that both types of reactions consume calcium hydroxide. In conclusion, to reduce the environmental footprint of cement production, SEMs are needed in large amount, at low cost, and with a good enough reactivity. Unfortunately, most current SEMs are not available in large enough amounts, with LC3 being a notable exception. In terms of silicate reactivity, SEMs can be classified considering their respective pozzolanic or hydraulic behavior. Beyond this, SEMs can lead to the formation of aluminate hydrates 
as explained in subsequent videos.